Gestalt IT is proud to present the on-premise IT roundtable. On the roundtable today, we have Tom Hollingsworth moderating the discussion, Pete Welcher, David Varnum, Bob McCouch, Carl Fugate, and Phil Gervasi. Check out our show notes for links to all of their stuff at gestaltit.com slash podcast. Tom sets up the discussion for this episode, but as you've already seen in the title, it's SD-WAN. Take it away, Tom. Hello, I'm Tom Hollingsworth, and welcome to an episode of the Gestalt IT Roundtable podcast. This podcast features groups of Tech Field Day delegates from events throughout the year discussing IT topics that are of interest to listeners out there. Today's episode is going to be all about software-defined wide area networking, which is actually a very interesting topic because a couple of years ago, SD-WAN wasn't even really a thing. It was a pie-in-the-sky idea that the pioneers of SDN used as a, the primary use case. I can still remember my very first SDN introduction was the infamous routing for dollars uh, demonstration that Cisco did. And now that routing for dollars demo is a market segment with billions of dollars just waiting to be tapped and a lot of funding. And since we heard from a couple of SD-WAN companies during Networking Field Day, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to a bunch of networking experts about what they thought SD-WAN really meant, you know, pitfalls and things to keep an eye on, but also the promise that it can deliver to your network, hopefully soon or maybe even in the future. So who has some thoughts about SD-WAN that they'd like to lead off with? Yeah, the thought I've been having this week is that if you're a startup company or any company whose future depends on your, the quality of your product's functionality, the amount of things you can do, the quality of your GUI, it's going to be a darn good GUI. It better be or you're sunk. Um, it's also the public face of the product. It's your brand. And I think we've seen two examples of pretty impressive GUI, pretty impressive products. I'm scratching my head about the question, how do I compare these? How do I decide which one's better? Is one a better fit for certain customers and another one better for others? So I'll just throw that out there. Anyone have uh, thoughts about comparing? Because I'm, I'm wondering, you know, from your comment, is it something where we're comparing apples to oranges, or are we comparing you know, apples to car tires? Is it really that different, or is it just different riffs on the, the same kind of thing? Well, I'm going to pick on Ethan since he's not microphoned. And so he's doing the comparison chart I've wanted for years, and um, it's a lot of work. So I'm, going to hold, I'm not going to hold my breath for it, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. Anyone else? I think of a lot of it just depends on uh, scale. <coughs> If you're a smaller customer, maybe go with a certain one. If you're a larger customer, maybe go with another. It also depends on your requirements. Some people are running voice. Some people still have legacy devices in their branches that need to be connected. And some SD-WAN providers have a solution. Some don't. So what you're saying is, is it sounds like before you go shopping, you should have a list of what you need before you actually pull the trigger, even on a POC. Because that's one of the things that we're actually seeing is, is that POCs are huge in the SD-WAN world. Yeah. Um, you throw some boxes out there because it's pretty easy to light a WAN link up. And the next thing you know, you've got, you know, hey, I really wanted all of these things for years. Let's go ahead and turn this up. Well, and there's also still a lot of feature disparity, I think, between different, between different solutions, right? You know, you could name six different uh, SD-WAN vendors, and, you know, the, the common set of features that they all support in the same way is, is fairly small. There's a lot of differentiation, I still think, between them in terms of architecture, feature sets, um, supported topologies, things like that. So... Um, the takeaway I've, I've gotten from this and, and uh, that I've you know, propagated to my customers uh, over the last you know, 12 months or so is if you're looking at SD-WAN, you've, you've really got to plan on doing several POCs. You can't just you know, pick one because the, you know, the glossy looks nice and, and, and buy it because you know, it's, it's really hard to know if they're going to meet all your needs. Yeah. Uh, and they have to be detailed POCs. They can't just be, yeah, it seems to work. Let's just stand aside up and play with it for an afternoon, right? Yeah, you've got to beat on it, cause congestion, cause Absolutely. whatever. Yep. Yeah, and one of the things that we, you know, we've seen today, you know, there, there's a, there is a lot of differentiation in this space. Um, it really depends on who you are, which solution is going to be right for you. Because there is no one-size-fits-all one solution in this space, and that's a good thing. You know, for some small, you know, small customers, there are managed services offerings that can be the right answer for them, you know, where they've, uh, they've kind of fully embraced cloud services. And so, you know, the services that they need are, are 
less technical um, you know, than a, a large enterprise that has hundreds of sites and is dealing with a lot of legacy technologies. And so we, we saw today <coughs> that one of the things that you're, you're going to get in a, in a, a, a uh, platform like what Vitella was, uh, was demonstrating is uh, the knobs that you need to, to actually look at all of the different types of applications and technologies that are running on your network and do different things with them. You know, take your business requirements and map those to those services. One thing that I think is still a consideration, um, you know, for anybody that is considering products in the space is, you know, I think that there is going to be some market consolidation, you know, in the future, right? There's still a lot of startups and, and um, I'm not sure where that's going to go. And so the, one of the bigger fears that I have is, is you know, somebody buying big into, you know, a solution that ends up getting orphaned or, uh, you know, picked up by somebody else and stripped of everything that made it what it is, you know. Which is not a reason not to deploy SD-WAN because everybody is really gunning for it right now. But um, well, I think one of those things you got to be careful at, about and, and consider who you're picking as a partner. Whether you're going to pick a startup that you might have some influence over their product you know, line or a more established player that you know may have maybe more stable but maybe isn't quite as agile. And I think that's actually a really good point. I was I was going to bring that up in in the discussion was you know uh, we, there there are clearly two classes of SD WAN vendors right now. There are the first generation folks who really you know were were uh, breaking new ground, driving out there, trying to find the the pot of gold at the end of the SD WAN rainbow essentially, and you know. They, they got a lot of funding, but now they've got to produce, they've got to have business, they've got to have real customers. How many times have we heard that in discussions? Hey, we have real customers. And then <coughs> generation two is all of the established networking vendors who suddenly realized, hey, there's money in them their hills, and they're coming out trying to get a hold of all of that. So the question that I have is, in traditional networking, if a router's application set falls over, if you don't pay the license fees for all the whiz-bang features, I mean, it still routes, right? It's, it's a packet router. But what happens when you have an appliance as your edge router and the license fee goes out, does it stop routing? Does your entire WAN go down? Does, is that a design consideration that, like as Bob said, if you back the wrong horse, are you going to find yourself in the middle of the desert with no way out? Yeah, that's a great point. You know, and, and some of the providers today um, you know, still have an on-premises you know, deployment of their, their management uh, you know, device, whatever that you know, may be. And so, and, but some vendors are taking, you know, the software as a service approach. You know, they're, they're deploying that. And I think you're going to see that, especially with a lot of the managed service offerings, where they're going to deploy one in their cloud. And so if that goes away, then, yeah, maybe you're, you know, kind of, you know, up a creek. So hopefully, you know, if, if that's going to be a big concern for you because you have a really large deployment, you know, that's, that's certainly a consideration you should take in, into account is, you know, should you go ahead and, and, and go with a solution that, um, you know, allows you the flexibility to deploy, you know, within your, your infrastructure. Yeah, and, and that actually you, you kind of segued into another, uh, uh, another element there, Carl, which is that um, one of the things we saw this week, uh, you know, particularly with, with, uh, with VeloCloud, is that, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of integration with uh, providers, right? So, you know, SD-WAN as a service, which is um, interesting for a couple of reasons. You know, one is, um, it's interesting because I think it signals that uh, that traditional WAN service providers recognize that SD WAN is a real threat to their to their business, right? To their core business, which is expensive, high SLA WAN links, right? Um, and so they're trying to make sure to, to protect their you know their profitability there. Um, but from a consumer standpoint, consumer meaning enterprise standpoint, one of the interesting plays there would be if you were to to go with that model rather than Picking an you know a, a solution that you purchase, you know if the horse that the service provider has backed turned out to be the wrong one, you still have a contract with that service provider to provide that managed service. Yeah. Right. So you you can deflect a little bit of risk there potentially. Yeah. And I, I think what Tom you know raises it's 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 certainly a, a really you know big risk. Um, you know the more that the service providers you know see that SD WAN is is where they need to move to because that's what customers want, the less. Cisco routers and Juniper routers and, you know, that they're buying as part of their managed service offering today. And so I, I certainly think that you, we will start to see acquisitions, you know, in this space um, and, and consolidation because of that. You know, Cisco is not just going to, to walk away and say, okay, I guess I'll stop selling, you know, edge routers. Right. Um, they, they're going to, to move to, into this space, I think, you know, 
Um, and it's, it's likely going to have to be through an acquisition. If I can change the subject slightly, I think there's also, this is something I'm mulling over probably future blogs, so this is going to be a little bit half-baked. But the thought I'm having is that maybe the shape of the WAN is changing. Mm -hmm. If you're no longer dependent on the MPLS provider, or if you can mix it freely, you're going to make much more use of Internet. That kind of favors Metro Ethernet architectures maybe a little bit. But the other thing we're hearing and we've heard in both of these presentations is kind of regionalization either by sites in the VIP tele presentation or regionalization in data centers. And the other thing we've been seeing is that data center providers want to get into the wide area game. They have strong, at least those with strong backbone connections between their uh, global data centers are saying, hey, we'll be your regional data center and pump your traffic over the backbone, get the benefit of all that bandwidth. Um, so internet as WAN not only changes what your edge device is, be it firewall or router, and to some extent the SD-WAN boxes are kind of trying to combine both those functions, plus ease of use, plus the analytics. So it's the features are here are kind of interesting because instead of, um, what's a good way to put this? The Cisco game for years has been kind of more and more technology based features, whereas this is more and more user GUI centric analytics and convenience features maybe, for lack of a better term. Yeah, yeah. And maybe well, somebody, yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I've always thought that one of the defining features of, of modern SD-WAN solutions is, you know, relative simplicity in, in consuming those services and deploying them. Now, you know, in the sidebar that um, that I had with Viptel after their presentation, you know, they recognize that, that building a complex large enterprise WAN is still complicated and will remain complicated and isn't necessarily going to be click, click and done, but, um, when I look at, at some of the you know some of the incumbent solutions versus some of the startup solutions, I think there's still a pretty clear line between de developing the solution based around um, relative ease of deployment, right, and hiding a lot of that complexity, um, you know, versus just leveraging uh, you know a lot of features that you may have already developed and and uh, you know getting something that works, but is going to be a real burden to maintain because you know this is a theme I've come back to a couple times this week, which is you know, enterprises are, are trying to do more and more with less and less resource and usually less focused resource, right? So you get, you know, several, you know, you get a team full of generalists and not a networking team or an, even a networking specialist, even a single person. And so, you know, there's an expectation that more and more solutions that they select are going to be easy for a non-networking expert to deploy and operate, or at least operate. And if I could follow up on that thought, something Bob and I were discussing earlier was the difficulty of finding sufficiently skilled technical people. And I see that popping up in various ways in networking. Cisco's acquisition of Meraki is one attempt to address that and reduce costs for the small to medium business, perhaps. Exactly. Um, but ease of use plays to that. If you just can't get the technical expertise to make whatever your favorite solution is work, you got to go with stuff that's simpler. Yeah. You know, the solution that we, we saw today, it certainly requires an expert, you know, someone with, with expert network expertise to deploy. Um, and I don't see that changing, you know, any, you know in, for enterprises that, that have, you know, large deployments or large amounts of, of, of different types of applications. Um, Definitely. Taking a quick intermission here to let you know that if you're enjoying this discussion, to head on over to gestaltit.com. We've got coverage from across the enterprise, from virtualization and servers, to networking, storage, and even that newfangled cloud. While you're there, sign up for one of our newsletters, and you'll get all of our latest coverage right in your inbox. If you haven't already, subscribe to the on-premise IT roundtable on iTunes, or your podcatcher of choice, and while you're there, rate review us as well. All right. Let's get back to the discussion. So one last thought that I want to kind of toss out here to, to close this out is actually a conversation that was going on amongst the delegates during the event. And it actually has to do with connectivity. Um, SD-WAN is a thing, and we know it's a thing because I've been told repeatedly over the last month that we're, we're no longer uh, having technical challenges and getting people to understand what it is. It's now budget decisions. <laughs> and I think SD-WAN has arrived where it has for one reason. Um, because routers are all Ethernet connectivity now. Um, one of the things that keeps coming up over and over and over again and that I've, I've always thought is interesting is I had to buy a router because I needed an ATM interface or I needed some kind of serial interface. Otherwise, why don't I just route in a switch? 
I mean, that's kind of one of the things that layer three switches are designed to do. Well, if everything is Ethernet now, does that mean that what we con what my concept of a router or anyone else's concept of a router is kind of goes away because we don't need serial connectivity? Does SD WAN only work because we are in the post serial world? I, I don't think so. I mean, we we actually had some discussions, you know, throughout the the session about this. Um, you know, certainly there's there's going to be areas of uh, of the world where you're not going to get Ethernet. It's just a fact of mm -hmm. life that we're going to live with, you know, probably for the next, you know, decade or, or longer. Um, so you'll need some type of, uh, of device to, to kind of do the, you know, translation between uh, a WAN interface and an Ethernet interface. You know, that being said, you know, it is a good thing that we're moving towards Ethernet. Um, what this means is that we're able to deploy you know, SD-WAN at a much lower cost for the sites that can support, you know, Ethernet-based technologies. Um, you know, deploying, you know, uh, WAN interfaces are expensive. Um, and so the, the more that we can, you know, shift, you know, to Ethernet, uh, the lower, you know, overall TCO that we're going to see in, in deploying these solutions. Very good. I think that's a an awesome summary of things. I think Phil, though, has a point he'd like to add. Yeah, it's not just Ethernet. I mean, we're deploying sites in India and Africa and Southeast Asia, and all I have is an SD card. And, and to be able to aggregate links so I can get a little bit better than bandwidth for my 400 people on site in the middle of nowhere, um, that's very compelling. So I think that's that's... Yeah, it's more than just Ethernet. We're more than just a post-serial world. But maybe the, the concept there is not just that we're post-serial, but we realize that mobility, that wireless connectivity, mm -hmm. has finally reached a point where instead of saying, okay, well, I can't get a four megabit MPLS circuit delivered to the site, I'm gonna go back to you know, a 128K frame relay, frame relay or something. Mm -hmm. Instead, my first thought is, oh, hey, the MPLS circuit isn't gonna be delivered for another two weeks. I'm just going to go out, buy a you know, Verizon 4G modem, pop it in the box, light it up, use LTE for a couple of weeks, and then when the MPLS circuit gets delivered, I will switch that over, and then the, LG, the, four, the LTE becomes my backup link. Because yeah. we're seeing that a lot. That's common now, but I think that's going to be the primary link. I mean, we rely on this a lot already, so I don't know if it's always going to be the backup. And yeah, I'm deploying it where it is the backup because I, I still have a couple thousand dollar a month contract with AT&T for that MPLS circuit. And then my backup is, uh, uh, you know, whatever, 35 by 5 on Time Warner Cable, and then I have a LTE card. Okay. But I mean, in, it, like I said, in other parts of the world, that's your primary, and I'm okay with that. And, and I think the reason that we can do that is because of SD-WAN, right? right? So one of the things that you're going to get is deep packet inspection. And what that allows us to do is say, the, one of the biggest drivers that, that, or the reasons that people avoid using wireless uh, backup today is because it's expensive. You're paying per, per bit you mm -hmm. know, to, to send this traffic. If you can push a policy that says, hey, I'm going to use uh, LTE, but I'm not going to allow YouTube or Netflix you know, across this link, um, and I can enforce that very, very easily, then all of the sudden, if it's just your business traffic that's going across that wireless link, it's affordable. And, and I think that's, uh, that's going to be a, a key driver. That's a good point. I think, I think we just finally hit circular logic. SD-WAN is a thing because we're in post-serial, but we're post-serial because SD-WAN is a thing. <laughs> I was really hoping somebody would say, this is a post-serial world and I'm a post-serial girl. <laughs> Amy. But nobody said it. No. No, I am not a post serial girl, but I am a post serial networking nerd. And we are living in a post serial world. That's there you I mean. go. Right. So I think we're going to close out this episode of the podcast. I want to thank all of our folks around the table Carl Fugate, Bill Gervaisi, Pete Welcher, Bob McCouch for your insight. Um, I think this has been a fascinating discussion. I can't wait to hear how SD-WAN is going to change our world in the coming months. So for Tom Hollingsworth, for the delegates around the table, I want to say a special thank you. And be sure to tune into our podcast feed for more great technology discussions, gestaltit.com slash podcast.